And what an enzyme does is it accelerates that chemical action to take place. You don't want all of them happening at the same time. You don't want all the meals you're going to eat this year take place at the same time. They're to be spread out as energy demands it. Hey, everybody. It's Dr. Jack. Yes, Mary's not here. Mary is on vacation in Hawaii with her mother and sisters. And they decided to take a week off and head over there, and they're having a great time, which makes it incumbent upon me to get these out on a regular basis to do this one by myself. So, hey, everybody, it's Dr. Jack, and welcome back to the Forbidden Doctor podcast. This is podcast episode 163, Enzymes, the River of Energy. Now, what I'm going to talk about is why every person, or maybe I should say every other person you know, especially teenagers, can hardly get out of bed anymore. I mean, why, why more and more people are being diagnosed for a variety of conditions where almost all of them simply break down into exhaustion. And a new medical diagnosis shows up all the time giving this condition of exhaustion a new name so some new drugs can be prescribed. And that is the process that is going on all the time. And what I'm going to talk about in this podcast is why that is happening. But before we get to that for our regular listeners, the next four minutes is our financial stuff. You can fast forward through this if you choose. But for our new listeners, please listen at least one time so you understand how we do things around here. I want to take a few minutes to talk to you about why we don't have sponsors on this podcast and what that means for our business model. Yeah, we've been approached many times to sell products on this show, but we've always resisted these financially tempting offers because what we're doing here is too important to be seen as biased or dishonest in favor of this product or that product or to be beholden to the views of a particular brand of something. You deserve unbiased information, and we know we have to compromise on that if, if we were to shill for third-rate products. And even though we do promote our products, it's because we made it, and we know what's in it, and we have the testimonials to back it up. But that said, we don't make money from these podcasts. All of our income comes from your support, and the sales of our supplements and the supplements of the one and only true whole food supplement manufacturer in the United States, Standard Process. But we aren't paid by Standard Process. Indeed, they discourage anyone talking about the amazing benefits of their products. So Standard Process and our own forbidden doctor supplements have saved our own lives and helped countless thousands of patients searching for an alternative to drugs for anything and drugs for everything. So the bottom line is we may mention supplements that you can get from our website or elsewhere on the, on the web. Uh, the knowledge we share is real, and you can take that with you forever, whether or not you ever buy anything from us. But if you have taken our free symptom survey, then let our nutritional experts consult and develop a personal supplement protocol for you uh, based on your real-world nutritional needs. And then... If you buy your protocol from us, not only have you taken a huge step in the right direction of your own health, but you've made everything we do here at Forbidden Doctor possible with your support. So thank you for that support. And now, as Mary often says, on with the things they don't want you to know. So where did all the enzymes go? I mean, enz our enzymes are back in stock. We've been out of stock for several months because we absolutely insist on the highest quality possible. Uh, we could have had our enzymes back quicker, but we would have had to compromise somewhat on the uh, potency and the purity. But we are back in stock. So, but where did all my enzymes go? I don't mean the ones in a bottle. I mean in my body. Now, remember, your body's ability to produce enzymes quickly reduces after about 35 years old. And almost nothing happens or stops without an enzyme being involved in the process, especially your energy levels and digestion. And if you are having any problem with your get up and go or lingering digestive problems like acid reflux or gassy indigestion, you might want to try our lifelong en energy enzymes. So now what is an enzyme? I want to talk about that a little bit. Then I want to talk about where they've gone, what happened to them. Because uh, 
there are many things that have happened over the last hundred years that contribute to the almost ocean of degenerative diseases that we have today in America that did not exist a hundred years ago. Or if they did, they were very rare. And, and I, when I say America, I don't mean just my country of birth. I, I mean any Western nation. And whether it's on the opposite side of the planet in Australia or in Europe or the Orient, any industrialized nation, they're all having the same kind of problems that we're having here in America. Now, enzymes are what are known as a macro molecular uh, molecular biological cat. It just means that they're very big molecules. And an enzyme accelerates a chemical reaction. Now, in the 35 to 38 trillion cells in the human body that the cellular physiologists and anatomists tell us that we have, every single cell has reactions going on inside of it all the time on a nanosecond basis. And I think a nano, if I remember right, it's a billionth of a second. I don't think it's a millionth. I think it's a billionth. And these reactions occur at different speeds. And what an enzyme does is it accelerates that chemical action to take place. You don't want all of them happening at the same time. You don't want all the meals you're going to eat this year take place at the same time. They're to be spread out as energy demands it. And so all, most, almost all the metabolic processes that take place inside the cell needs an enzyme catalyst in order to occur at a rate fast enough to sustain life. Some of them have to be very quick, as I said. Some of them are not, not quite as quick. But the metabolic pathways that create the energy that drives the cell, that drives the tissue, that drives the organ, that drives the body, depends upon enzymes to catalyze every single individual step. Now we've, not we, but physiologists have identified about somewhere around 5,000 biochemical reaction types that take place in the body. And most enzymes are proteins, and of these 5,000 processes, like, like all kinds of catalysts, and a catalyst is just something that makes something happen faster without being consumed by itself, these enzymes increase the reaction rate by lowering something that's called the activation energy. Now, you're sitting there watching your favorite football game, or now it's going to be March Madness coming up here pretty quick. And you're sitting there, or, or your favorite movie, whatever else. And you're sitting there, and you're comfortable. And somebody comes up and says, hey, I, I need you to come and look at this. Well, I, don't, I don't want to. I mean, it's right in the middle. You know, can, can you wait till halftime? I mean, you just, okay, now here comes the catalyst. Hey, the house is on fire. Boom, you jump out of the chair. That's what a catalyst is. That's what an enzyme does. It makes something that's rather slow to take place speed up. Now, enzymes, some of them can make the, their action take place many times millions, many millions of times faster than they otherwise would be. An extreme example, I'm going to give you a big word here um, because we looked at it in school, uh, erotidine 5-phosphate decarboxylase. <laughs> that is an enzyme. And without that enzyme being presence, being present in something, and it has to do with yeast. If that enzyme wasn't present, the reaction would take 78 million years in the absence of that enzyme to take place. When the enzyme is present, it takes 18 milliseconds when that enzyme is catalyzed into the process. Now, some of you may feel like it takes 78 million years to digest a heavy meal. It's for the same reason. And enzyme activity can be affected by other, other molecules, other enzymes, uh, especially inhibitors. And inhibitors decrease enzyme activity. An activator speeds it up. It's the inhibitors that I kind of want to talk about in this podcast. I want to talk about what is slowing down the enzyme activity in your body. Now, a lot of therapeutic drugs and, and poisons are enzyme inhibitors. Um, an enzyme activity decreases uh, considerably outside its optimal temperature and pH. 
That's why the pH of the blood stays at a certain range, very small, about 7.2 to 7.3 and a half, that area there. Uh, a little bit either way, but very little because enzyme activity in the blood occurs at that pH and an internal core temperature of about 103 degrees. If you get too hot, which is why a high fever, like one above 105, can be very serious, enzyme activity breaks down. Without enzymes, there's no life. Also, if the pH gets outside, it, like uh, uh, diabetic acidosis um, or alkalosis, other kinds of metabolic conditions that can cause the blood pH to either go acidic or go more alkaline. Very dangerous for life because these enzymes only react in a certain pH and a certain temperature. Like if you go to an emergency room, I've used this example in other podcasts, you go to an emergency room in an unconscious state, they're going to do a blood gas on you right away. They got to find out what the blood pH is because they got to find out they have, well, they're going to have to buffer it one way or the other. And if they don't, you could die quickly. Now, there are household products that use enzymes to speed up chemical reactions. Uh, there are enzymes in um, washing powders and the uh, little stain stick that you use, that's an enzyme in that stick to start breaking down what those stains are made out of, proteins, fats, carbohydrates, or some chemical. Uh, enzymes in meat tenderizers uh, break down the proteins into smaller molecules that makes the meat easier to chew. Um, there was a time many a year ago when my son Christian, uh, we were on the uh, beach in the uh, Gulf of Mexico, and we're all sitting there having a pretty good time. Most of us are in the sand sunning, and he's down there on the edge of the water, and he starts screaming his head off like he's on fire. And we get down there, and I see the Portuguese man of war that rolled up on the beach, and I see the welts on his legs. Now, do you, and many of you do, know the immediate first aid treatment for a jellyfish sting? Yeah, it's Adolph's meat tenderizer. It's a very powerful enzyme that breaks down the poison that he got from the, um, from the Portuguese man of war. And so we picked him up and I ran. I, I didn't know that at the time. I mean, this is many, many, many years ago. I mean, he's in his late 30s and I think he was two or three when this happened. And we went, ran up to the first aid station, and, and they, <laughs> they, they were not only prepared. There were several boxes of Adolph's meat tenderizer on the counter in the first aid station because it's a very common thing. And they just sprinkled it all over his leg. And within seconds, I don't think it was a full minute, within seconds he calmed down and tears were you know, coming out of his eyes. And we dried him off and we hugged him and the pain was gone because the enzymes in that meat tenderizer broke down that poison. Now, um, so in the presence of an enzyme, the reaction runs in the same direction. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. But without that enzyme, it isn't going to happen. And so the reaction needs the enzyme. It happens much more quickly. So where have all the enzymes gone? Why are things so different today than they were 100 years ago? And I think, you know, you can scratch your heads a little bit and figure that out. Because it wasn't 100 years ago when um, our foods were unprocessed, they were unrefined, they were grown on clean farm ground that was rotated properly and fertilized with animal manure and uh, whatever else they could come up with that was of a something Mother Nature made. And there were no preservatives. There were no chemicals. There were no um, pesticides. Cooking back then was very simple. There's usually a pot on the stove going all the time with uh, some kind of uh, chicken or beef or fish or whatever else. There was always broth that was present. There was always some food of some orientation that did not come to the house in a box, a bag, or a can. And now <clears throat> you look at today, 100 years later, the agribusiness. I don't know that that word existed 100 years ago. 
but all the chemicals and all the pesticides that destroy the living soil. Now, if you talk to a farmer who's old enough, he knows the soil must be alive. The soil, the topsoil, the humus needs to be several inches, if not several feet deep, which you will hardly find anywhere anymore, except up in the Kettle Moraine in the Wisconsin area, or in primitive areas up in the hills that have never been farmed. And that humus is alive with bacteria and all kinds of molds and all kinds of um, other living organisms that bring life and energy and minerals into the roots of the plants that are there, but load that, that um, soil up with life and power. And so the, the processes that we have today, um, we don't have the soil that, that's teeming with millions of these living organisms anymore. And I, I, not just earthworms, you know, but, but microorganisms that are absolutely essential in maintaining our health and preventing disease that needs to get into the plants that we eat or into the plants that the animals that we eat, eat. And dead soil, and the reason they have to so heavily fertilize it is because it's so dead, is that soil is deficient in enzymes and it's deficient in micronutrients and, and soil-based organisms, especially the beneficial microbes, which help prevent the you know, the proliferation of intestinal toxins. You've heard Mary and I talk about this endlessly, about the gut and the health of the gut. And this already serious um, depletion of our food is then accelerated on top of all of that by the way most Americans eat. We gulp down this um, pesticide-laden coffee and, and pastries that were made out of refined flour and sugar and margarine, all kinds of bad oils for breakfast. We, we rush by fast food uh, restaurants for lunch. Uh, we grab some kind of canned or frozen sauce and soup and chemically treated vegetables because they weren't organic. And the hormone-laden meats because they were commercially processed meats that are loaded with hormones. Eating foods that are loaded with herbicides and pesticides. And we hardly have a chance anymore. Uh, and, and then wherever we can to speed things up, we throw it in a microwave to heat it up quickly rather than taking the time to make a real meal. And so meanwhile, in the, in the constant quest that, I mean, look at all the, the, uh, the gym activity and the gym membership where people are just, you know, this constant quest for a flatter stomach and, and trimmer thighs they're just consuming artificial, artificial um, sweeteners and, and all kinds of um, fake fats, the bad fats, the bad oils, by the ton. And so in addition to the, the agricultural and, and the dietary influences that I'm talking about, there's all other kinds of uh, poisoning of enzymes by chemical exposures to the, just the, the uh, common dental practice of root canals. And we have podcasts on that about how all root canals are bad. All of them have a, a festering pustulence and poison at the very tip of that root, even though it, you don't feel it anymore. You can't feel that going on because there's no nerve. The pulp was removed. You can't feel it. But the poisoning is going on all the time. Now, I, I think it was the EPA where I checked like about 400 pesticides are currently licensed for use on American foods. Um, over a billion pounds of this stuff is dumped into our farms, our forests, our lawns, our fields. And speaking of lawns, you know what the uh, most dangerous profession in America is when it comes to poisoning, the kind of poisoning that I'm talking about. It's professional golfers, just like for, for men. And, I, and for women who are professional golfers, the most dangerous, poisonous uh, uh, employment for a woman is to work in a hair salon because of their constant, constant exposure to poisons and toxins. And unfortunately, we're not informed about which pesticides or how many pesticides are being used to produce the food that you're buying at the local supermarket. So what do the pesticides have to do with enzymes? Because that's what this podcast is all about. Well, all poisons, including pesticides, work by destroying an enzyme 
stopping an enzyme from happening. Um, let me use an example of cyanide, the reason why cyanide kills so fast, so quickly, in less than a minute, is because there's a very important enzyme that's involved in the last process of um, the production of oxygen in, inside the cells. And that enzyme is destroyed by the presence of cyanide. So that the, the last step of getting oxygen into the cells of our bodies, and of course our cells will not work without that oxygen, and the oxygen production that takes place inside the cell is stopped immediately in the presence of cyanide that kills that enzyme. But we have all these other things that are going on, and since enzymes are the source of life for the body that I've been talking about, any substance that kills an enzyme is a threat to your health. Now, all the synthetic chemicals, the pesticides, the herbicides, and by synthetic, I mean Mother Nature didn't make it. Uh, and Mother Nature makes pesticides. Mother make, Nature makes herbicides. They're in the form of other kinds of plants. Those of you who are into this know that you can um, grow certain kinds of herbs, <clears throat> excuse me, certain kinds of plants in your garden that tend to keep pests away. I mean, Mother Nature has this covered. But we wanted to speed it up. And we, so we create all this stuff. And um, what happens is the DNA, the RNA uh, that's located in the nucleus of our cells uh, processes that allow transcription to take place, which, which is the messaging getting from the nucleus of the cell out into the fluid of the cell for the cell to do its work, liver cell, kidney cell, ovary cell, whatever. And these poisons stop those things from taking place. And if you have a certain kind of a poison, whether it's hair care, house products, uh, a certain kind of food you like that's not organic, and you get enough of it, it will affect a certain variety of enzymes that eventually a disease process will show up because the enzymes aren't there to do their job. So research has well documented the damage of, of pesticides to uh, enzymes. Um, I could go on and on about this uh, in my notes here, but I don't think that's necessary. Just, but just to mention, the carbamates, which are in, are in ant and a fly and um, roach killers, um, poisons enzymes that control cellular function inside those bugs. And just as we can have cellular processes killed, by certain poisons, these are targeted towards them. Then there's the, you, I, most of you have heard of organophosphates that are used to, that, that's usually the commercial uh, pesticides to, to control the insects in agriculture. And an organophosphate blocks enzyme activity in the nervous system. And even though bugs are rather primitive compared to us, as far as physiology is concerned, they still have a nervous system, even if it's just ganglion fibers. And what organophosphates do is stop that process from happening. What's an organophosphate do to you if you get enough of it? It stops the nervous system from working correctly. Your nervous system stops working correctly. What happens? Well, there are certain processes that aren't going to occur. And then there's the uh, halogenated um, pesticides that they use for insects um, in agriculture that will poison certain, certain functions inside the cell. Now... The, um, these things are absolutely dangerous to human health because they stop the process of enzymes. Some of them will stop the clotting of blood, which is also used with um, certain rodent poisons. But that same poison inside of you that can come in through your food supply will stop the clotting of blood in your body, and you can hemorrhage. So the spraying of these pesticides is, you're never told about that. Do you get a notice if you're downwind from a big commercial farm that we're going to be spraying pesticides today? You should close the windows of your house or go on a vacation for two weeks. You know, that's kind of silly. And then there, if you read the label, there's the active ingredients and then there are the inert ingredients. And you're told 
a, a little lie here when they tell you that the inert ingredients don't do anything. Yeah, they do. They make up the bulk of what's in there, and it makes the pesticide much more potent, much more easier to apply. And a lot of these inerts are extremely toxic, but the manufacturer doesn't have to tell you about this stuff because they're, they're a proprietary mix. They're a trade secret. And so the USDA allows these things to be sprayed. The FDA allows these things to show up in your food. And simply, if we don't know what's in the pesticide and we don't know where they're being sprayed, how can you protect yourself? Well, that's part of what this podcast is about. Number one, you buy organic. You'll hear Mary and I talking about that all the time in the United States and in some other countries. Organic still means something. A number of years ago, the United States Department of Agriculture got a hold of organic farmers because what they said was organic in Wisconsin may not agree with what was said in Arizona. So they got them all together and they said, listen, boys and girls, you set up a system of standards here in the next 20 minutes or, of course, longer than that, but that you all will be required to follow or we will set up a standard of organic and you won't like it. So the food manufacturers or food growers, the organic food growers, got together and said, all right, point A, point B, point C, point D, point E. This um, describes an organic farm. If these things aren't present, the farm cannot use the term organic. The USDA came in and said, yay, good. Now we don't have to, be, we don't have to fool with it. You guys internally regulate this stuff yourself. And um, we're sure you're mature enough to do that because you don't want us getting in the middle of that. So that's one way to get around these problems is to make sure you get whatever you eat as organic as possible, that, you, that as far as uh, meats are concerned, that you're getting grass-fed, grass-pastured, grass-finished animals in farms that are not or in grassy farm areas that are not being sprayed with anything that has a stream running through the middle of it with melting snow at the headwaters. So there's clean water running through there. That these animals have never had a needle, never had anything sprayed on them, and came from mothers of the same sort. That's how you get around this problem. So why, um, I want to read our product, and yeah, this is kind of a product promoting thing here because of the reason why we created our enzymes. Uh, there are a lot of enzymes on the market, and if you're using them out there and you're happy with them, fine. The, the reason that I created the enzyme market that, or the product that we have um, is because I, Mary gave me a Father's Day present a number of years ago that um, involved a CT scan of my heart. And I, you know, I was rather reluctant to go do it, like most guys are, but I went ahead and did it anyway, and they found four tiny little specks of calcium deposits in the coronary structure. You have five arteries in there, five major ones. And one of them, or, or I think it was four different ones, had little tiny spots. So I just started taking a evening primrose. That cleans that stuff out. And I just laid, and I had the MRI report, and I read MRI reports uh, in the office constantly. And here's one of me, and I thought, well, the important thing was that there wasn't any, there was no uh, a, um, a thrombosis or occlusion or narrowing or any of this kind of stuff in my arteries. And so I was happy, and I just laid down the uh, MRI report from the radiologist. And I never picked it up for, I don't know, three, four months later. For some reason, it was laying there, and I picked it up, and I looked at it, and it said I had an atrophic pancreas. Well, not being a pancreatic surgeon, but still having, you know, done uh, human dissection in a gross lab in school. I, I know where the pancreas is. It runs underneath the stomach, and you can see the stomach, you can see the pancreas, and you can see the small intestine sitting underneath the pancreas or around it. But atrophic means without form, without body. It also means wasting away. So that got me quite frightened by the whole prospect. So I started looking for what I felt was the 
strength, potency, and broad spectrum support for a pancreas that I thought I needed, and I could not find it. So we made one. We made an enzyme product. Uh, two Christmases ago, I was rechecked, and it said that my pancreas was, that it was fine. It was normal. Uh, a little small. In all honesty, I'll say it. It says a little small relative to the rest of your organs, but it's, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. So I have been marketing that to people who need increased energy ever since. I don't treat the pancreas in my, pro, in my uh, office. Uh, our nutritional people do not treat anything. We just offer nutritional support that provides the body with the raw materials it needs to take care of itself. Now, I'm going to read one experience here from someone who, uh, in a product, said, it's at Amazon, Long Life Energy Enzymes. And there's just, I'm not going to go into the testimonials. There's a whole slew of them at Amazon.com regarding that product. But this is the, for a lot of different things that we never intended the product to be made for in the first place. But they, once you start the digestive processes, once you get the enzymatic processes moving again, and I used to say, if after 35, you know, they decrease. But now we got teenagers that we have to about use dynamite to get them out of blood, out of bed, because they are so tired. So this one testimony I want to read. In the few weeks since we started taking these enzymes, we definitely noticed improved energy. In a way that's kind of hard to explain, my wife and I can feel these enzymes working from the inside. We both suffer from chronic fatigue, and this product has been such a blessing. In addition to the energy boost, these enzymes do a ton of other things like nourish the pancreas, assist in balancing sugars, turmeric for inflammation, and even probiotics. We really appreciate the quality of the long-life energy enzymes. We looked into a lot of similar products, some offered by MLMs. The care and knowledge that went into these enzymes really can't be touched by anything else. The long-life energy enzymes are an excellent product, and we can't wait to share them with our families. We are grateful that they can be purchased easily without the headache and markup of an MLM. They are a much better product and priced better than any MLM can offer. Well, thank you. So why would they experience increased energy? Well, for the same reason that they experience a reversal in many other kinds of conditions that exist in the body simply because enzymes now being present can allow the body to do a better job of restoring tissue, house cleaning, better nerve response, better balance in, uh, in the nervous system. So some of the things that we have seen, conditions, uh, improve, not because we're treating them. It's because we're giving the body enzymes that allows the body to take care of them. I have them here in alphabetical order. Uh, acne, allergies, appendicitis, arthritis, asthma, bedwetting, broken bones, bruises, cancer. Although we don't treat cancer, uh, we will give you, uh, at your request, uh, a um, supplement recommendation that helps your immune system to, to do a better job of taking care of itself. Candidiasis, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, disc problems, fibroids, gallbladder disorders, gastritis, gastric ulcer, headaches, herpes, hiatal hernia, hyperactivity, ADD, infant colic, insomnia, intestinal disorders, kidney stones, menopausal symptoms, mental disorders. We've even had a child with downs, the, the parents saying when he takes these enzymes, he calms down, his anxiety disappears. Who knew? Osteoporosis, parasites, premenstrual syndrome, prostate enlargement, psoriasis, seizures, sprains, tendonitis, and weight problems. These are some of the things where we have seen that benefit take place. Remember, your body's ability to produce enzymes quickly reduces after 35 years old, and that is for normal, healthy people. Even those in very good condition, your pancreas, after 35 years old, starts making less and less of these enzymes. Well, what about those teenagers whose dietary choices and lifestyles do not promote a healthy life? I mean, I was a child in the 60s. I mean, we were up at the crack of dawn, quick breakfast, usually eggs and bacon, and then outside until our parents came calling for us after dark. And nobody ran out of energy. Nobody, you know, said in the middle of the afternoon, oh, I can't finish the third inning. I just have to go home and take a nap. Nobody did that. So almost nothing happens or stops without an enzyme being involved in the process, especially your energy levels and digestion. 
And if you're having any problem with your get up and go or lingering digestive problems such as acid reflux or gassy indigestion, you might want to try the Long Life Energy Enzymes. You go to ForbiddenDoctor.com and take the free symptom survey. You might be surprised at your results. One of our nutritionists will provide the results for you, all of which is at no charge to you. Well, I could go on and on and on, but I wanted this to be brief. But that should do it. <clears throat> the statements made in this podcast about specific products have not been evaluated by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. All information provided or any information contained on or in any product label or packaging or this podcast is for informational purposes only and is certainly not intended as a substitute for advice from your physician or other healthcare professional. So thanks for listening to this forbidden information in our forbidden podcast. Join us next time for another in-depth discussion of forbidden knowledge. We will see you then. Thank you for listening to the Forbidden Doctor podcast. If you are curious about long life energy enzymes or ageless thyroid, you can purchase them without a membership from our website at ForbiddenDoctor.com or get our enzyme formula from Amazon.com by searching the full term long life energy enzymes. Don't forget to take our obligation free symptom survey to get a free personalized supplement protocol recommended for you by Dr. Jack, Mary, or one of our qualified nutritionists. Take the survey. Get a call from our nutritionist to create a protocol and a patient login. Then use that login to see your own personal protocol along with any favorites you've saved from our symptom library. Remember, our website and our clinic are here for you always.